Yes, uh, just briefly uh, again to add to what's been said, I just we just can't emphasise enough that the context of Colossians 1.16 is the new age, the new creation, the new kingdom, which God has brought about through Christ. So the, the topic under discussion is not the Genesis creation, the original creation of the heavens and the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars. The, the emphasis here, the context here concerns eschatology. What has happened since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who's now been proclaimed as Lord and who now sits at the right hand of the majesty on high as God's new and immortalized man and head of the new creation, the new humanity. And this is the context. If you just go back in Colossians 1 there, he's talking about, say, from verse 12 onwards, uh, that it's the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So he's talking about our inheritance. Verse 13, he's delivered us from the domain of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So the kingdom, the inheritance are mentioned. And then he goes on after mentioning our redemption and forgiveness of sins, that uh, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, that is present tense, uh, the firstborn of all creation. So we're now looking at Jesus ascended. We're not looking at previous pre-existence or previous creations. We're looking at the state of events that have come in since the Christ event and particularly since his resurrection and exaltation. Now, as Anthony has pointed out, the preposition N in verse 16 for in him, uh, it is uh, uh, not a, a dative of sphere, but it's rather a dative um, uh, rather, it is a dative of sphere and it's not a dative of agency, okay? It's not an instrumental dative. So in other words, with a view to him, all things have been created. And he specifies what these things are, as Anthony has pointed out. He does not say uh, all things such as the sun, the moon, the stars, and all that Genesis creation. Notice he, he absolutely delineates for us the things which he's talking about, which have been, uh, and which... Uh, have come into being since Christ's exaltation. The things which are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, thrones or dominions, rulers or authorities, all things have been, as Anthony points out, perfect tense now, created through him and for him. It's interesting that uh, a parallel verse I find very interesting as a commentary on this is uh, found in 1 Peter chapter 3. Speaking again of the resurrection of Jesus, uh, where he says in verse 22 about Christ, who is now at the right hand of God, having gone into heaven after angels and authorities and powers had been subjected to him. So with the resurrection and the exaltation and the glorification of Christ into heaven, we have this whole new eschatology. So we've got to get out of this old mindset of always running back to Genesis and the old creation, as has been beautifully pointed out. We've got to start thinking about the new order of events for the new age. And these are all there under the headship of Christ, as Colossians goes on to tell us and his preeminence.